1970, every dollar that you held was backed up by physical gold in a vault. The next year, President Richard Nixon severed the ties between gold and the dollar, meaning this hasn't been backed up by gold ever since. So throughout history, money changes, and most of us were either not alive or we can't remember the last time that money changed in a major way. So we wrongly assume that it can't be changed again. We think to ourselves that what we're used to is gonna continue forwards in the exact same way. But a major change to money is coming. And this is something that we cannot afford to ignore. This is not speculation either. China has already begun issuing their new central bank digital currency. These central banks of England, Japan, Canada, and the European Central Bank have released a report as they move closer to completely replacing cash and introducing a new central bank digital currency. And the USA, who has been considering this for several years already, has been pushed even closer due to the events of 2020 and the realization that sending out hundreds of millions of physical checks might not be the most efficient way to hand out money to people. The biggest change to money since 1971 is coming and it's coming soon. So in this video, I wanna share with you my research on the upcoming central bank digital dollar and how this new version of the dollar is gonna replace the current dollars that you're using today. The same goes for British pounds, the euro, the yen, and just about any currency that you're using today. Most importantly, I'm gonna talk about what this means for us financially and how we can prepare ourselves to protect our money in the coming months and years. This video is not financial advice, nor am I a financial advisor. Just like you, I'm just a regular guy who's been researching this stuff to really try to get my own head around things as it's quite confusing when you first dig into it. And then this is just me sharing my personal research with you. So if you do appreciate it, by the way, remember to smash the like button and subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Friday. So let's begin with the what. What exactly is going on? Well, it's no secret the cash is on the way out. Governments hate it as they can't track people's transactions. The IRS hates cash as it makes taxing people more difficult. And banks can't charge a transaction fee when you use it. So the move towards society being cashless is clear, with countries like Australia previously saying that they hope to be completely cashless by as early as 2022. And then this year came along. Now we have fears about physical banknotes spreading the virus. And at the same time, the government needs to get money into the hands of the people, which involves sending out hundreds of millions of physical checks. In 2020, where just about everything is digital, it seems crazy that sending out hundreds of millions of checks is something that has actually happened. 2020 has pushed governments closer and closer to introducing and pushing forwards a cashless society. And that may seem like a big change already, but that is masking the even greater change, which is money itself being on the verge of changing. You see, over the past decade, we've become used to using our phones to make contactless payments. We've become used to the idea that, that this physical cash is slowly moving into our online bank accounts and is shown as just digits on a screen. But whichever method you use to spend your money, your phone or cash, you still have a bank account with someone like JP Morgan, Bank of America or Wells Fargo. This new digital dollar though, might be about to change all of that. So you may have heard that a lot of money has been printed in 2020, but do you know who actually printed it? It was the USA's central bank, the Fed. They're in charge of producing money and changing interest rates to kickstart the economy. Basically, they're the guys who the government goes to when the government wants to have more money to spend, but they don't want to raise taxes. Over the past few years, the Fed has been researching the idea of producing more dollars, but instead of giving it to the banks or the government, they give it directly to you. Not in the form of a check either. We're talking about an application on your phone, which the Fed can directly control. If that happens, it will have huge implications for how money works and how safe your money is. But we will come to that. The Fed are not alone either. As of May this year, 80% of the 66 largest central banks in the world said they were working on a central bank digital currency. In fact, China has already begun testing out their digital yuan, issued directly to people by the central bank. 
On October 10th, they ran a lottery and distributed $1.5 million worth of it to 50,000 people. Why did they do this? Think of it as a test run to get feedback before they eventually move to only using a central bank digital yuan. South Korea's central bank launched a 22-month pilot program earlier this year in April, and the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston is collaborating with MIT to serve a 30 to 40 available technologies. Let's put it this way, it's not a matter of if anymore, it's a matter of when. And the when might not be too far away either, as we've already seen how much of a burden sending physical money to people really is. In China for the test run, winners of the lottery simply downloaded an application and the central bank deposited the money directly into their accounts. What took months before with the stimulus checks could be done in a matter of minutes. In fact, in order to get people in the US to participate with the digital dollar, I think it makes a lot of sense that this is essentially what the US will do. It might not be the next stimulus check or the next bill passed, but at some point it's likely that the Fed will distribute money to you and tell you that the only way to collect it is to download the app and start using the digital dollar. And I think just about everyone is going to accept that free money, even if it is a central bank issued currency. So what is all of the fuss about then? Well, having a central bank digital dollar isn't necessarily all bad. It could offer greater financial inclusion, more efficient payment systems, and more options for managing monetary policy. However, with the Fed issuing dollars directly to citizens, it could minimize the middleman role of traditional commercial banks. It could damage the reputation of the central bank as there would be so much more involved. But the biggest concern of all relates to our data and the fact that this move would give so much more control of our money to just one single entity. So today, we have the central bank who sits at the top and they make the big financial decisions, the kind of decisions that affect everyone. Then you have the consumer banks, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Citigroup's, Wells Fargo, and in my case, in the UK, Santander, NatWest, Barclays, etc. And then at the bottom, there we are. For us, we're affected by what the central bank at the top does, because whatever they do, it creates ripples through the system, and those ripples are gonna impact us too. For example, if the central bank lower their interest rates, the commercial banks above us will usually do the same, and that might mean your mortgage gets cheaper. If the central bank raises interest rates, the commercial banks above us will probably do that too, and that means a more expensive mortgage. So while we never directly interact with the central bank, their actions have a great impact on our lives. The commercial banks, however, we do directly interact with. We keep our money in an account with them. If we want a mortgage or a loan, we go to our commercial bank to try and get one. You see, what is actually good about the banking system? And I know there aren't many things which are good about the banking system, but one element which is good is there are many different banks to choose from. If you're not happy with your current one, you can always switch to another. If one doesn't offer you a good mortgage rate, you can always shop around. Because there is almost a layer of decentralization between us and the central bank, it creates competition. Competition among banks pushes them to offer the best services at the best rates in order to keep and attract us customers. Best services are the best rates. I know it doesn't sound like I'm describing banks, does it? But just imagine what happens without this competition. Imagine what happens when the government can see every transaction you've ever made because the money you spend is issued directly by the central bank. This is the reality that many countries could soon be facing. We are moving quickly towards a future where cash is no longer allowed and your government will be able to see everything you've ever spent money on. And if they want, cut off your access to your money like that. So what does this mean for us and how can we protect ourselves? Sadly, we can't know exactly what this means for us until it's too late. So far, the government, in fact, virtually every government, has been very quiet on how they would design their systems. And they likely won't announce anything until it's basically about to be rolled out. Now, thankfully, in the US, there are indications that the Fed want to work with private companies instead of bypassing them completely. And if that's true, it would hopefully mean there is still a layer of decentralization above you which means there is still competition, and so you should be served by the banks about as well as you are today. Hmm. 
Essentially, think about it like this. A central bank currency will give the government greater control over our money than they've ever had before. There's no question that they have greater powers. The question is, what are they going to do with that power? That's the big question, and the answer is that just like everything, it will vary depending on your government and the country. Some countries may choose to pass laws which will limit the insight the government has as they respect privacy laws. Other countries, however, will sit at the opposite ends of the spectrum and use their extra powers to exert more force and control over the citizens than ever before particularly sadly with countries that have dictators or totalitarian governments in charge. So how can we prepare? Well again, the amount of need to prepare is gonna vary depending on your country, but two investments come to mind for me. The first has been used as money for thousands of years and could have a role in countries with dictators or those totalitarian governments, gold. Considering that gold essentially was money up until 1971, just 50 years ago, it seems likely to me that some people or companies may turn to it again as we approach the next major change to money. The other investment is much newer, much more volatile and much more risky, but it does have many of the same properties as gold and the benefit of being digital. Bitcoin. Now, as I've said in previous videos, I don't know if Bitcoin is ready to be a gold-like safe haven yet. To tell you the truth, I'm not personally convinced Bitcoin is at that place yet even in spite of public US companies buying hundreds of millions of dollars worth. But it does have other clear use cases. And in the long term, if Bitcoin can establish itself more and more, and there's been enough years it's been around and been safe, it does have many similar properties to gold alongside its other uses. Now that you've made it this far, let's play a little game. So in the comments, post the year and the month that you think the digital dollar will first be tested out by the general public. Do you think it will be early 2021 or maybe even as late as 2022? Let me know in the comments and we'll come back to this video someday and crown an official winner. Every Tuesday and Friday, I release videos just like this. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe now. And of course, thank you for watching. This isn't real by the way. Hopefully nobody noticed though.